so this is an interesting interesting story the time shook night um <laughs> everyone's got a shook night story um my first encounter with shook night was actually um uh at the four seasons hotel with my boy uh, a couple of my, my friends actually malik um musa uh, it was a couple of guys that were with me and um you know we got into well we didn't get into it you know there was a little bit of a fight that happened and it resulted in an agent getting his tooth knocked out um don't ask i ain't a snitch but um <laughs> it's tonight night was sitting there uh sipping tea uh while we were in our melee and um that was my first encounter with him uh, a couple of weeks later um Shug, and I, I bumped into him at the Four Seasons again, and we had a little small chat. I told him I was working on a movie called Color of the Cross. And um, we sat down, and he said, hey, you know, can we meet up and talk about it? So I had a restaurant at the time on Sunset Boulevard, and we met at my restaurant. And, um, you know, he was, he was a very notorious figure at that time, you know, and um, a lot of people were kind of nervous about Suge and you know, I'm from Brooklyn, though. I, I don't, you know, I treat everybody the same, you know. And um, he seemed like a fairly, um, you know, decent human beings, as human beings go. You know, he's from the streets. But, you know, we chatted and we talked about this, met at the restaurant, we talked about this movie. And at the time, I wasn't getting any support from churches that I had gone to to try to get their support, you know, in terms of... Um, getting their congregation to support the film or coming on board as producers and so that we can make the film legitimate so I can pitch it to a studio. Nobody wanted to touch it. This was right after uh, Mel Gibson did Passion of the Christ. And so um, I wrote this script about a black Jesus and um, called Color of the Cross. And Shug was very interested in it. So we met at my restaurant and he said to me, hey, um, I want to finance the movie. He was running Death Row at the time. And I said, what do you mean? I said, oh, okay, cool. You know, it's going to cost me about $2 million to make this movie independently. And I had dreams of, you know, packing busloads of church people to come see this movie. And um, Shug said to me, um, but there's only one stipulation. Uh, I want to play Jesus Christ. Now, I hadn't written the movie I had not written the movie for it to, for an actor, well, Shug wasn't even an actor, but I had not even envisioned a, you know, six, five, you know, 300 pound guy, plus pound guy playing Jesus, who has a reputation of, you know, throwing people out the window. So I said, look, you know, and of course, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being re very respectful because the man was dead up. He was real serious about it. And I said, okay, well, why do you think that would work? And he said, um, well, when I was in the pen, I spent a lot of time, you know, when we're in the yard, walking the yard, talking to Muslims, talking to different cats, five percenters, talking about Jesus. And there's a common misconception. This is all according to him. There's a common misconception that Jesus was a, um, he, this is his words, a punk. Jesus was a gangster. And I told him, look, man, you know, my dad's a pastor. If you guys didn't know that, my dad's a pastor. So I grew up pretty much in the church and did a lot of reading of scripture. And nowhere in there do I recall Jesus being thugged out, you know. And he said, oh, there's a lot of things they don't tell you. But think about it logically. For a man to convince 12 niggas, this is him, his words, 12 niggas. To leave their family and their homes, to walk with him out in the abyss, in the in the hilltops, trying to convert people, um, uh, he had to be gangster. And so, I, I, as an intellectual, though, I thought that was a pretty interesting and fascinating take. Um, and he went on, and we spent hours talking about this. And the next day, I went home and thought about it. Next day, he called me and said, "What do you think?" I said, "It's an interesting concept." Um, let me talk to some people about it. And at the time, I went to First AME Church, and I talked to my pastor about it. And 
my pastor damn near kicked, just kicked me out the damn office. He kicked me out the office. He said, you are, you, you, you are going be, you are selling your soul to get your movie made, talking about making Jesus a thug. And, I, and he told me, my pastor, that I'm going to insult and offend a lot of Christians. And, um, and uh, that I should rethink, uh, you know, this idea because it's not going to pan out the way I, you know, envision any, and, and I asked him, well, will you help me make the movie as it's written? And he said, no, I won't do that either. Uh, but what I can give you is some, give you some godly advice. Don't play yourself. Oh, this is, this is black Jesus we're talking about. A very controversial subject, a very controversial notion, even within the black church. Um, and so when I met with church leaders, um, I met with a few um, who told me very explicitly, I'm talking about top pastors in Los Angeles, established pastors, big churches, mega churches, who sat me down and said, um, we're not touching this. This idea of black Jesus is a little too, it's going to separate and divide our congregation, and we don't need that. Um, uh, one pastor, um, uh, Bishop Jones, Noel Jones, I'll never forget that, you know, had me waiting 20 minutes for him to show back up, and, you know, I was waiting for him in his office, and then, you know, I'm an excited filmmaker, I, I, I know that, you know, Mel Gibson had all this support from the evangelicals, I'm going to get all this support from my black church pastors, you know, these mega churches, uh, after having me wait 20 minutes for a meeting that he set up, uh, this gentleman told me, shows up with a in a track suit and a uh, 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 I recall him eating salad he had a, a bowl of salad sat down at his uh, behind his desk invited me in and said um so how what can I do for you I said oh well sir you know I'm trying to make my movie and you know it's a first depiction of black Jesus in Hollywood and and um, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I, Mel Gibson was very successful doing this. And, and uh, uh, can you support it? All I would need is no money, but just to make your congregation aware of it and get your support. And um, his first thing, I'll never forget it. He's looked at me dead in my eye and he said, now why would I want to do that? I said, well, you know, it's, it's a Christian movie and it, it's faith-based and we've been underrepresented when it comes to the image of Jesus. And, 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 and as he takes a bite of his uh, tomato, and what do I get out of this? I was stunned. I was stunned. I was shocked. I was disgusted. And, um, you know... It, it was a wake-up call. It was a wake-up call that this was not the easy cakewalk that I had thought it was going to be. And um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I would have to take a longer path than I had envisioned. So, so I say all this to say the conversation with Shug Knight when I met someone who immediately told me, hey, I'm going to put the money in for you to go make your dream come true isn't one that I was going to immediately dismiss. And so it weighed on me because at the same time, I also did not want to, being the first uh, film about Jesus as a represented as a black person, I didn't want to offend um, or taint uh, his image or our own image. Um, so back to Suge Knight. Back now, I am burdened with the task of calling this, this passionate thespian uh, in the form of Suge Knight um, and tell, breaking the news to him and telling him, dog, I just can't do it. Um, so I, I, I thought about it for a couple of days. He kept calling me. He kept calling me. My phone kept ringing. And I would just send it to, you know, because I had to weigh it, man. I really wanted to get my movie made, one. Two, I thought the idea was interesting enough to at least consider. And three, um, you know, 
I wasn't getting the support of the Christians. So um, with that being said, um, I finally decided I'm going to call Shug. So I give Shug a call and I say, hey, man, can you meet me at the restaurant? I need to just uh, go over some things with you. He said, all right, man. You want me to bring the money with me or what? I said, no, 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 you hold on to that two million for a second. I just want to make sure, you know, we're on the same page. So he comes and I sit him down and I said, Suge, look, man, I appreciate your interest in the project, but I did speak with my pastor who wasn't really jiving with the idea that you play uh, the Messiah. Um, although I do think the idea is an interesting one. He sat down, he looked at me, and he said, hey, man, you know, I really want to play him. Now, I didn't know how to take that. You know, I didn't know if he was, like, you know, low-key threatening, low-key trying to put some, like, I didn't, you know. So, you know, me, if anybody, any of y'all know me, uh, <laughs> I didn't let that dissuade me. I, I, so I doubled down. I said, yeah, dog, it's not going to happen. Um... And I know there's a lot of people now that Suge is incarcerated who got a lot of Suge stories and, and uh, you know, but, but, but there's no cap. You know, I looked at the man in the eye and I told him it's not happening. And, um, and that's pretty much how I deal with people. I, I, I try not to string people along. Um, and so he looked at me a little longer. He said, well, you know, and, and, and the conversation sort of slowly... Um, morphed into okay well this restaurant you got here um how i get in and uh i said well i'm not really looking for partners um and he said okay he said all right if you are just just let me know but i still think you're making a bad decision not casting me at jesus christ in this movie um uh and then which reminds me speaking of restaurant i got another story uh to tell you all about uh, Jimmy Henchman, uh, uh, we'll get to that uh, a little later, but I eventually uh, went to Fox and um, and I pitched them the movie and um, there's a second part to this story uh, which hurt me more than the than the Suge Knight move, the Suge Knight situation, because I mean that was just a hey, well it is what it is. Um, the second part of this story, stay tuned, there's a part two, which is how my good friend, uh, Gabriel Cassius, <laughs> you know, pretty, you know, at the time, pretty, pretty well-known actor, recognizable actor, good, very, very strong actor, uh, played me out. In the meantime, fellas, ladies, I'm going to enjoy my pool, um, and uh, look at my little dog here. My little pitch up. Pitch up. All right, well, I, I see this dog once every, you know, four years, so she don't, she don't respond to me. It's a, hold on a second, let me see, let me see. This, this never fails, hold on. You wanna close this section out? You wanna close this section out? Tell the people that's it. Tell the people, part, wait for part two. All right, wait for part two.